Welcome to part 31 of the Rick and Morty app series. In the last part, we put together the setting view models. And in this part, we're going to build out the view in Swift UI. Hit that like button down below. Let me know in the comments if you smashed it or not. And let's continue. So we're going to be building this view in Swift UI. Like I promised in the very beginning of the series, we're going to leverage both UI kit and Swift UI. It's going to be a view. So we're going to pop it into this view folder here. And let's see if we want to actually make a folder for this. Perhaps we will. I'll actually call it Swift UI. So for those folks looking on the repo, they actually know what part of the app is in Swift UI. And we'll create a new file in here. And let's actually look for Swift UI and we'll find Swift UI view. We'll name this RM episode, rather RM settings. We already finished episodes. RM settings view. So let's go ahead and create it. Shouldn't have any problems here. And let's talk about Swift UI because it is pretty cool actually. So you'll see this new thing on the right hand side. If you haven't ever worked with Swift UI, this is called the canvas. You can hit this little refresh button. And what this lets you do is this lets you preview whatever view you're building out on the left hand side over here. Sometimes it's a little slow to load. It is a little flaky sometimes, but when it does work, it's pretty darn cool. So we want to build out a view that can take in a collection of our view models for all of our cells and it should be able to actually spit out a view by looping over all of them that looks like a list of selectable cells. So let's figure out how to do that. So we're going to create a constructor here and this constructor will take in a single view model which I think I just called. Let's go ahead and say this is view model. And I believe this is called our view.viewmodel, like so. We'll want to hang on to this here, like so. And in here, we'll say self.viewmodel is viewmodel. All right, looks pretty good. Next up, what we want to go and do is I'm going to create a scroll view inside of here. And this is going to be a vertical scroll view. And just so you guys can get an idea of how this is going to work, um, is as follows. You can see we have an error down here. This preview content is actually uh, what's rendering this preview on the right. And it's yelling at me because it's saying, well, hey, you need to actually create a view model that we can pass in. And I'll actually do that. So we'll instantiate one of these. Once again, I'm going to take all of our RM setting options. So RM setting option, all cases, and compact map these cases into the RM setting cell view models with a type dollar zero. So if you do command B to build, you shouldn't have any errors, hopefully. But we are now passing in this collection. So in our scroll view here, just so you guys can get a glimpse of how this works, let's say we do a uh, for each, and this for each is over zero to, I don't know, 10. We're going to say number in. And what we can do is we can return a text in here and we'll say hello. And let's see why this is yelling at me. So let's see, it cannot convert value of type closed range. So let's do the following. Let's do for loop. And I'm going to do a, let's create an array in here. So let's create strings. We'll say maybe A, B, and C. And we can say for our strings or for each on our strings where the ID that's going to be identifying the unique string, we're going to have string in basically render a label with said string. And if you build this on the right hand side, if we hit this little refresh icon to see a live preview of this, we see our uh, strings here. So ABC. One other thing that I'll call your attention to is on the bottom left here, you can actually tweak your preview here. So I like developing in dark mode. So we're going to flip this on for color scheme and it'll flip to dark mode. So it looks pretty good. So we basically want to do the same for loop thing, but instead of over the strings, we're going to do it over our uh, cell view models. So we're going to loop over view model dot cell view models. And I believe we can drop the ID because we already made that view model, each of these identifiable. Now that we've done that, we can say view model and let's just put the title in here to actually see what this looks like. So I'll, again, I'll hit this little refresh button here and cool. We have all of our uh, strings popping in. So let's make this look a little nicer. Now, admittedly, I haven't actually worked with Swift UI in like a week or two, so I don't exactly recall what I'm going to design this with. So 
we can actually create a list. So instead of doing a for each directly, there is a way where you can loop over data and we're gonna loop over it directly here and inside of here, we'll actually get our view model. Alrighty. And I'll move this text up into this list. Now list will actually give us something that looks a lot more reminiscent of a table view. And we'll see why this is yelling at me. All right, it should go away. Awesome. Go ahead and refresh the preview here and we'll see what it looks like. All right, bear with me here. Looks like it is taking its time. So instead of fussing around with the preview, what I'll actually go ahead and do is run it in our simulator. But to do that, we do need to create this view in our controller. So let's open up this controller again. And in settings, we want to actually show this view. So if we look at our simulator, there's no view here. So let's set this view up for us. And what we want to use here is to kind of interchangeably use UI kit and Swift UI is what we call a hosting view or a hosting view controller. So I'll create this as the settings view and settings view will be a UI hosting uh, view is what I'm looking for. You can create this with a root view and let me also import Swift UI. And you can create this with a root view and the root view we want is our settings view here and this will be self dot view model like so. Now we can't actually reference this because it's on self. So we are going to want to create the view model directly here. So let's go ahead and do it as follows. So we can take this entire view model that we're instantiating here. And what I can do is just pop it into here and we should be able to build. Now that we've got this being created here, we don't actually need this underscore if I'm not mistaken. What I want is a UI hosting view and it looks like it wants just a UI host controller. Let's see, is it a UI host view? I could have sworn there is a hosting view. So let's jump into here and see what it's called because I'm 99% sure there is a host view as well. So there's a hosting configuration. There is a hosting controller and let's come farther down here and let's see if a hosting view exists. All right. So let's actually head on over to everyone's favorite resource called Google and we're going to search for Swift UI UI hosting view and let's see if that exists. Okay. Maybe I absolutely made that up. Maybe it's just a hosting view controller. So let's actually change that. We'll go ahead and say UI hosting view controller or UI hosting controller. And a UI hosting controller takes in a root view. Okay, so we can actually get rid of this coder thing. And we need the open paren here. We already have root view there. And our hosting controller gets created like so. So cool, so now that we've got this hosting controller here, we want to actually put it in our UI kit based settings controller. So I'll do that in another function. I'm gonna say add child controller. Let's actually call it add Swift UI controller. And essentially we're gonna call this function right here. It'll actually call it um, at the bottom of view to load. And we'll do as follows. We're gonna say add child. The child we want to add is the settings Swift UI controller. Let's go ahead and add this. We'll notify this controller did move to parent is what I'm looking for. Parent will be self. And now that we've done this, we want to actually add the view itself. So we're going to say view add sub view. This controller is view. And we do want to say this controller's views uh, auto resizing mask does move into constraints or mask into constraints so we can apply some constraints to it. And then I'll apply said constraints right down here. So we'll just activate this. We want this view to just be pinned to all four corners of our settings view. So let's say the top anchor on this guy is going to be a constraint equal to the view dot safe area layout guide top anchor. And we're just going to copy and paste this guy a total of four times to do the left, the right and the bottom like so. Just don't forget to update this on the left hand side. 
And let's actually give it a build and run. Let's see if it builds, let's see if it runs, and let's see what it looks like. So we'll jump into settings and okay. So something is going going a little weird here. I don't see quite anything. And the reason for that is probably because I messed up our Swift UI view. Let me jump into there and we're gonna debug all of this together because I don't wanna cut the video and uh, showcase you know how I'm fixing this stuff uh, off video. So here we are creating a list and in every single iteration of the list, we should be creating one of these labels. Let's go ahead and change this back to our for each. We'll build and run and make sure we're at least seeing that. Okay, so we are definitely seeing something in here. So it looks like we're adding the view appropriately, but I'm messing up the list. So let's see why I'm messing up the list here. So in our list, we're looping over each of these. And what I expect to put inside of here is a uh, row content. So let's see why our row content is being messed up. We're gonna look for a Swift UI list example. Best way to Google. Cool, we got Hacking with Swift, which is a great resource. Looks like this is inside of a VStack. All right, makes sense. We wanna loop over this, we'll continue down. And here, we're actually getting the exact same thing that we're doing. So let's make this a little simpler and let's see if we can actually get that to show up. And actually, the reason I just realized this probably isn't showing up is we don't wanna list in a scroll view because that list already handles the scrolling, so we're kind of putting a scroll view in a scroll view. So by dropping actually that V stack, we get this to show up. So that's awesome. We're actually in pretty good shape. One other thing that we want to do is we did bring in an icon. So I want to put an icon on the left of this uh, text here. So we're going to put this into a horizontal stack. And we're going to have an image here. And this image you can create with a system name. You can create with you know, a standard name, but there is a way to create this with a UI image, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see where that is. So we can create it with a CG image, and there is an option right here to create it with a UI image. And this is going to be view model dot our, uh, what did we call it, image here. Now in our case, our image is optional. So what we want to do is in fact unwrap it. Now we know we'll always have it, but we do need to just unwrap it because we did have to make it optional. Go ahead and build and run, and I suspect our images will be kind of weirdly sized, which in fact they are. So let's actually do some stuff on here. We're gonna make these resizable. We are also going to make the foreground color on this be white. Build and run. And if we come back here, uh, the sizing is like insanely screwed up. So let me actually go ahead and fix this. So this is going to be foreground color. Let's actually make this resizable and there is a way to set the aspect ratio. We want this to fit. We'll set a fixed size on this as well. The width is perhaps going to be 70 and the height is, let's actually do smaller. Let's do 40, so 40 by 40. And let me open up this canvas again and maybe that I fix that list, it'll actually show up so we don't have to run every single time. To do that, you hit this icon and you can open up the canvas option. Hit that refresh button to load in our view again. And cool, so it does look like the sizes are more appropriate. Maybe we want it to be even a bit more smaller. I'll do 30 here. We will also go and add some padding onto the image and refresh this. Okay, I think it's uh, everything's looking pretty good. Everything looks a little big. So let's see, what else do we want to do? Maybe on the H stack as well, I'll add the padding. I'll drop it from the image. Let's see if that looks a little better. Okay, I think that looks a little better. The icons are still kind of close to our actual uh, text, but we'll adjust that as needed. And then over here, looks like in dark mode, it's still not behaving. And I can't remember for the life of me what I'm looking for. I believe it could be fill. So let's do fill.white. See if that builds. That actually does not build. And the reason it doesn't build is that this doesn't have a fill on it. So let's go ahead and say, let me see what colors are available. So I believe it was foreground color, but it seems like it doesn't want to cooperate. So let's go ahead and do foreground. We'll also do background color and I'll say color dot blue. Drop background from that. Let's try to refresh this again. And okay, it's cool. So it looks like background color does actually take 
um, we can, instead of using color, the blue color here, what I can actually do is use our view models color for the container. So that is certainly progress. The way that we'll be able to do that is we want to create a Swift UI color object from a UI kit color object. So this is how we do that. We'll say view model dot container color. And let's also add a smidge of maybe padding so the boxes look a little bigger and you can actually see that everything did update in real time, which is beyond awesome. We'll add a little bit of a corner radius to it, maybe like six, so it gets a little rounded and it looks a little nicer. Let's bump this padding up a little bit as well so it looks even bigger. Now I do want the actual uh, color of the icon to be white. And I am going to also set some leading padding, AKA left padding on this. And I'm gonna maybe do 10 and just see how obnoxious that is. And let's go ahead and refresh this. I think that might be a little too much. Uh, I think that's actually perfect. So let's go ahead and stick with that. So let me actually make it 100. Did it even move it? Let's try that again. Because if it's not moving it, then something is off. Okay, so it is certainly moving it. We'll go ahead and do 10. I think that looks awesome. And let's see what else we want to do. For the padding here, I just want this to be a trailing padding. So we're gonna do dot trailing. And what this is going to do is just apply the padding on the right side of the icon so we don't have so much you know, empty space. But let's see how we can actually change the color here. I think it might be tint color. So let's go ahead and do color dot white. Alrighty, looks like that doesn't exist either. So we're gonna jump to Google. So we're gonna search for Swift UI change color tint. And we'll jump on over to Stack Overflow. And it looks like it is in fact foreground color. So I'm not incredibly clear why it's not working. Okay, the reason it's not working is we do want to specify uh, the rendering mode perhaps, okay? But I believe it's template by default. Let's come in here and do that. And let's do foreground color, color.blue. Let's go ahead and see why it's yelling at me. It is yelling at me because we are doing trailing padding here. Let's see why that's a problem. So it's saying cannot infer contextual type here. So I'll just get rid of this while we work on the color. And let's see why else it's yelling at me. The order of these modifiers do matter. So in this case, we put the rendering first because it goes on the image. Okay, now it looks like it is in fact changing it. So I believe what I was missing was the rendering mode. So I'm just gonna comment it out just so we actually are clear that that's what we needed. So rendering mode, for those of you not familiar, you can actually specify, do you want a template image which lets you modify it? Do you want the original image which gives you the um, original colors? Uh, and then there's also another ver variant of this, which I won't go into uh, in this video, but you can also specify if you want to fill in icons. And um, I'm not going to go into that too much because it's not relevant here, but we'll go ahead and make this white. And I kind of like how this is looking. So let's decrease the size of our images. Maybe let's do 20. And let's increase the padding and let's maybe do like, uh, 15, which will hopefully make our containers bigger and our icon smaller. It looks like our containers are a little too big now, so let's try like eight. Alrighty, go ahead and give that a run and a refresh. And I think this is looking pretty darn good. So let's drop the padding on the eight stack itself. I think that'll just make everything a little more compact here. And okay, I think everything is a little too close now. So let's try this again. Let's add a little bit of bottom padding. Maybe we'll do three here. You kind of just have to play with it to see what kind of looks the best. And I think this is looking good. So I'm gonna go and build and run. We'll jump into here and we have a pretty nifty view. So right now when we click on one of these, absolutely nothing is happening because we haven't configured this in Swift UI or in UI kit to handle it. But this video has gotten long enough. We've dipped our toes into Swift UI. Essentially, we built out a table view which would have taken, I don't know, like 100 plus lines of code in, very, in a very small uh, number of lines of code. So that's pretty awesome. I really like the preview functionality of Swift UI. Admittedly, I'm still of the mindset that if you're very serious about getting a job or building a portfolio, 
the largest companies, I would say most of the Fortune 500 are still heavily, heavily using UI kit. So you absolutely do need to know that. Nothing against Swift UI. It's actually pretty amazing, but I will call that out. So that's all I've got for this part. It looks like the last tab we have to fill out is location, but we'll first handle tapping on each of these. So drop a like before clicking away, hit subscribe, tweet out the series. I'll see you in the next part.